Leviticus chapter number 13. Look with me in verse number 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh arising a scab or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then it shall be brought before Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of his flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. I want to preach just for a little while on the subject, leprosy, a type of sin. Leprosy, a type of sin. Now, by means of introduction, I just want to explain to you what a Bible type is. A natural man is incapable of understanding spiritual truth. In fact, most Christians are incapable of understanding spiritual truth because they're so fleshly and carnal. Amen. They spend half their Christian life backslid and not right with God. Amen. So when God tries to tell us something, many times in the Scripture, He uses what is referred to as a type. In other words, he takes a spiritual truth and he uses something else that we as human beings have a better grasp of and a better understanding to illustrate this truth. Let me give you an example. The natural man says, God, what is the Holy Ghost? What's the Holy Ghost like? Well, in John 3, 8, it says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The natural man says, God, what's the Holy Ghost like? He says, well, it's sort of like the wind. You can't tell when the wind comes up. Man, we've been having tornado watches all this week. I spend more time in the basement of the church than I do in my bus. Amen. And this wind will come up. He says, the Holy Ghost is like that. Sometime you may not even be thinking about God. And because of the prayers of someone else or because of the word of God you may have heard, the Holy Ghost will blow across your soul every once in a while and reveal your eternal need. Amen. And it's at those times when God deals with you, you can get saved by the grace of God. Amen. But at the same token, the Holy Ghost is a type of the wind. He may settle down and calm down and may never be found. You got to get in while God's blowing across your soul. Amen. The natural man says, Lord, what's the Holy Ghost like? He says, well, it's sort of like the wind. The natural man says, well, Lord, what's it going to be like when you come back again? Well, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. What was it like in the days of Noah? Well, there was wickedness and violence on every hand. The heart of all mankind is imagination thought upon evil continually. That's what it was like in the days of Noah. He said, man, it's going to be just like those days. What happened? Well, Enoch, who's a type of the church, was nowhere to be found. Noah, who's a type of Israel, was safe in the ark, preserved through the time of testing. Amen? God uses a type to illustrate a spiritual truth. The natural man says, God, what's the lake of fire like? What is it like when we perish in our sins and go to hell and stand before God at the great white throne and when we're cast into the lake of fire? The natural man says, God, what's the lake of fire like? And the Lord in his wisdom used the Greek word Gehenna to describe the lake of fire. Gehenna refers to the valley of Hinnom outside the gates of Jerusalem where the trash and the garbage was burnt. Mankind says, God, what's hell like? He says, you see that valley? Yes, Lord. You see the blood and the dung and the filth and the garbage and the maggots and the fire? Do you see the lame animals and the wounded animals that are cast forth beyond the gate as they're thrown into that fire and they endure that pain and they don't understand what's happening and they begin to gnash on one another with their teeth and there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth? He says, you see that place of filth? Do you see that place of garbage? He says, that's what the lake of fire is like. God uses things that we can understand to illustrate spiritual truth. Man says, God, what is sin like? And God says, well, sin is sort of like leprosy. Well, think about leprosy. What is the case of a leper? Well, first of all, a leper's dirty. The Bible says he's unclean. Amen. Isaiah 64, 6 says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. God says your righteousness. He says the good things you do are filthy before a holy God. 
If a man had leprosy just on the palm of his hand and nowhere else in his body, yet because of that leprosy on his hand, he would be considered entirely unclean. You say, I'm a good man. I'm a moral man. I don't do that much wrong. you got enough sin in you to take you to hell. You have enough sin within your body for God to count you as entirely as a filthy rag. The filthy rag that's mentioned in Isaiah 64, 6 speaks of a bandage over a leprous wound as the corruption and pus begins to infiltrate that bandage. That's what God says your goodness and your righteousness is. What is sin like? It's like leprosy. It's dirty. It also makes you deserted. Numbers 5-2 command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper. It makes you deserted. You have no fellowship with God. You're cast out without the camp. You have no part nor parcel with the people of God. It makes you dirty. It makes you deserted. It also makes you dangerous. Deuteronomy 24-8 Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priest and the Levite shall teach you as I have commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Leprosy makes you dangerous. It's contagious. Amen. I tell you what, the Bible says profane and vain babblings increase unto more ungodliness. That sin, that leprosy will spread. It makes you dangerous. Anybody that's ever run a Christian school, you know that the influence of a couple of bad, wicked kids in that school will change the whole face of that school and make other kids desire to be wicked, rebellious against God. It makes you dirty and deserted. It makes you dangerous. It doesn't matter what station in life you're in. Leprosy is sin. It can affect you. Leprosy affects the rowdy. 2 Samuel 3.29, it says, Let there not fail from the house of Joab, one that hath an issue, or that is a leper. Joab was a violent man. He was a rowdy man. He was a tough man. He thought he had to whirl by the tail, but leprosy affected his household. He thought he was too tough for God, but it affected him. It doesn't matter if you're rowdy. It doesn't matter if you're religious. 2 Chronicles 26.19, Uzziah. He was a religious man. He thought, well, I'll just invade the office of the priest and burn incense. Well, I'm just as good as this priesthood. Well, I'm just as good as anybody else. He invaded the priest's office, and while he was in his rebellion, he began to turn leprous right before him. It'll affect you if you're rowdy. It'll affect you if you're religious. It'll also affect you if you're righteous. It doesn't matter if you're saved. Leprosy, your sin, it'll still affect you if you're saved. Numbers 12.10 Miriam began to speak against Moses. She spoke against the man of God, and she turned leprous right in their sight. I tell you what, Miriam, though she was saved, she was not exempt from the plague of leprosy. She turned white. In Numbers 12, 14, they cast her out of the camp for seven days until she was cleansed. You know, when a child of God gets in sin, they ought to be thrown out of the church for a while. Amen? They need to get right with God. Amen? I tell you what, it'll affect you if you're righteous. Luke 17, the Bible speaks of ten lepers that came to Jesus to be cleansed. It'll affect those that are, that are reformed. Those that try to reform themselves. Ten lepers came unto Jesus. They were all cleansed, but only one of them came back and gave glory to God. Those lepers came to Christ just to lose the symptoms of their problem, but they didn't come to Christ for the right motive. Amen. A lot of people are drunks and they know it's ruining their life, so they'll go to Alcoholics Anonymous, get a little bit of religion, have their little steps and their pins, but they're no more saved than a rock. Amen. They'll get off of drugs, they'll quit running the street, they'll just quit things that they know are detrimental to them, but they're not getting to the root of the problem. They're just affecting the outward influence. It'll affect the reform. I want to show you the condition of a leper. Look in my text. Leviticus chapter 13. Verse number 2, it says, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising. The first thing about leprosy is it's a rising up of the flesh. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Your sin nature's rotten, amen. I don't care if you're saved or lost. You're a filthy rag, amen. Your sin nature will take control of you if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. It'll be a rising up in your flesh. Out of the heart is where the wickedness proceeds, but the sin takes a hold of your flesh and you'll begin to act out those things that are down in your heart. In the flesh, it's arising. Verse number 3, it says that it's deeper than the skin. 
Leprosy goes much deeper than just the flesh. 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 1 says, We should cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. You can be spiritually filthy, amen? Leprosy goes much deeper than the sin. It goes into the very core and heart of mankind. Verse number 6, it speaks about scabs. It says, It is but a scab. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. Leprosy leaves scars. You may be cleansed from that leprosy, but it'll leave a scar on your body that you'll bear to the graveyard. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I tell you what, you get out and sin, there's some things you won't get back, amen. Leprosy leaves scars on your life. You get away from God, there's some consequences you'll have to bear whether you get right with God or not. It leaves scars, verse number 11. It says it is an old leprosy. This leprosy is as old as man itself. Romans 5, 14, it says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. This leprosy is just as old as man itself. We were shapen in iniquity. We were conceived in sin. There's nothing good about us tonight. You're a sinner by nature, and you're a sinner by choice. Amen. This leprosy, it's also in verse 24, it speaks of a burning. It says there's a burning in that flesh. Jude one twenty three. it says, And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That leprosy is a burning, amen. I tell you what, it rises up in your flesh. It causes you to do wickedness and sin, and you'll suffer a high price for it. Verse 44, it tells us that it also affects the head. Verse 44, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. Isaiah 1, 5 says, Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. Leviticus chapter number 13 and verse 47. I want you to notice this. Leviticus 13 verse 47. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, leprosy can also affect your clothes. God says there's such a thing as sinful clothes. I tell you what, the way the average Christian dresses today, it's an abomination unto an almighty God. Amen. Man, the Bible says a woman should adorn herself in modest apparel. Modesty means she's not going to attract attention to her body. There's such a thing as sinful clothes. Amen. This leprosy, it'll even get in your garments. I want you to notice Leviticus chapter 14 and verse 34. Leviticus 14 and verse 34. It says... When you come into the land of Canaan, which I give a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house in the land of your possession. Leprosy can also affect your home. Man, it'll get inside your clothes. It'll even get in your house. Amen. Leprosy will tear up your home. It'll tear up your family. It'll make your life a living hell. It'll put your kids in hell. That little bit of leprosy, you may think it's enjoyable the sin you're in, but it'll spread and affect your whole family and your whole house. I want you to notice nextly the cure of a leper. The cure of a leper. Now we've got a problem. God says sin's just like leprosy and we're ate up in it, amen? But God makes provision for that sin that there might be a cure. Leviticus 13 and verse 13. Look there with me. Leviticus 13 and verse 13. It says, Then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy hath covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy. Now, isn't that strange? If a person is affected with this white leprosy, and it covers them from head to toe, where it's painfully apparent to everyone round about that they're, they have a problem, if they're covered from head to toe with this white leprosy, the Bible says they're clean. But yet, if the flesh tries to heal itself and begins to regenerate, he says if there's raw flesh coming up, that they're unclean. Isn't that strange? The first thing you've got to do to get cleansed of this leprosy in your life is to admit you've got a problem, amen. 
When they're covered from head to toe in that leprosy, they're pronounced clean because they're not trying to hide their problem, amen. But when that flesh tries to reform itself and that raw flesh tries to heal itself, then it's unclean before God. You've got to admit that you have a problem before a holy God, amen. You've got to admit your sin. Secondly, you have to repent. Second Kings chapter number 7, there are some lepers that were starving to death. There was a plague in the land. And they said in 2 Kings 7 and verse 3, there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. They said one to another, why sit we here until we die? They were in bad shape. Not only did they have leprosy, they were starving to death. But you know what they said? They said, we're just not going to sit here until we die. We can do something about our situation. Amen. First of all, you admit you got a problem. Second of all, you got to repent. Amen. Why sit you here till you die? You don't have to go to hell. Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary's cross to pay for your sin and to cleanse you from that leprosy. Amen. Admit your sin and repent. 2 Kings 5, you've got to wash. Amen. 2 Kings 5, 13, Naaman the Syrian came. He heard that there was something in Israel that could help his problem. 2 Kings 5, 13, his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid them to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. And he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. When Naaman the Syrian began to wash from his sin, he was made clean. Amen. Now when he went down in the water... That was a symbolic cleansing. In Acts 22, 16, it says, Why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now these water dogs will say that this baptism is what saves you, amen. This is when Paul got baptized. But I want you to know that he was referred to as Brother Saul before he ever hit the water, amen. He was already cleansed. The reason why he went down into the water, it was a symbolic washing that had already occurred through the blood of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, 5, the Bible says that he loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. I tell you what, if we'll be immersed in the blood of Christ, we'll be cleansed from our sins. Amen. We got to get washed. We got to admit our sin. We got to repent and come to Christ for washing. Look in Leviticus chapter 14. Leviticus 14. I want you to notice the cleansing of a leper. Leviticus chapter number 14. Look in verse number 4. It says, Then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them into the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and he shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose in the open field. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary's cross to pay for our sins. John MacArthur preaches that the blood of Christ has no purpose, that it was the death of Christ that saves us from our sins. But my friend, if that blood of Jesus Christ hit that dirt, we're all going to hell. That blood of Christ was taken into the third heaven and sprinkled on the mercy seat of heaven to obtain eternal redemption for our souls. Amen. I want you to notice this typology here in Leviticus 14. Here's the priest. He takes a sacrifice in an earthen vessel. That's what Jesus Christ was. He was our sacrifice in an earthen vessel. He was clothed in a body of flesh. That earthen vessel speaks of his humanity. That sacrifice was in that earthen vessel and the priest who represents God the Father took that knife and killed that sacrifice. In the same manner when Jesus Christ hung on Calvary's cross, God the Father laid every sin committed by every human being upon His darling Son. But they took that sacrifice in that earthen vessel as that priest killed those birds. And I tell you what, it didn't end there. It said that they had to be standing over running water. Running water is a type and a picture of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost caught the blood at Calvary and saved that precious blood that the Lord Jesus Christ might sprinkle it on the mercy seat and obtain redemption for our souls. Amen. 
I tell you what, that's the cleansing of a leper through the blood of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter number 5 and verse 12. When the Lord Jesus Christ was in his earthly ministry, it says, And it came to pass, there was a certain city, and behold, a man full of leprosy, whom seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. He said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And you know what God said? The Lord Jesus Christ said, I will be thou clean. He's already shed his blood to take care of the leprosy of sin. He's already paid the price and made the sacrifice. He's already said that he'll cleanse you. All that's left for you to do is to come unto him. And he'll save you by the wonderful grace of God. You know what? The blood of Christ, not only does it save sinners, but it keeps Christian in right fellowship. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Leprosy is a type of sin, but the Lord Jesus Christ has the answer.